Hello and welcome to this very special edition of The Money Show. I am Kavita Thaplial and uh, you are watching National Nutrition Week special on The Money Show where uh, it's a grand finale of the entire week that uh, we have put up for you. And today the show is very interesting because we're going to have viewer queries uh, uh, based on the age group, what's the right kind of financial portfolio or in financial sense or in the diet sense, the right kind of nutrition for their portfolio will be advised. And uh, we'll be also taking an overlook of the market and uh, guiding you in terms of rebalancing your portfolio, revamping, reshaping, anything that you need to keep in mind looking at the changing trends in the market. I have very special guests with me and let me introduce my guest. Uh, I have Ashish Shankar, man from Motilal Oswal, MD and CEO Motilal Oswal, Private Wealth Management. Welcome to the show. Uh, Kostu Bela Purkar, Director of Fund Research, Morningstar, Investment Research India. Welcome to the show and uh, I think for the first time we are meeting physically. I mean, you know, having some interaction in the yeah. studio uh, calls for a special show, definitely. So, let me begin. Since we are talking about National uh, Nutrition Week over here and uh, yes, we will be talking about our financial portfolio and the right nutrition for that. But apart from that, what are the things that you take care of in your nutrition? Uh, balanced diet, uh, uh, talking about typical thali, right. a nutrition thali for you, right. which is your favorite food group in the, in the thali and, and what's the right kind of nutrition for you right now that you have planned for yourself? So uh, Kavita, I think this show is very apt. As you mentioned, uh, a balanced diet is extremely important and anything in excess is bad for the body, right? So typically for me, you know, the Indian thali works the best. Right, you have some carbs, which is your rotis or rice, one of the two, right? And then you have your legumes, which is dal, and lots of sabji, different kinds of sabzis. I think this in itself is a very balanced and nutritional diet. Other than that, I mean, you have some salad, greens, etc., on the side. And yes, on occasional days, you know, I love to have some uh, dessert right. uh, because that then completes the meal. Right. Uh, I think everything in, in, in moderation. Yeah, absolutely. That works for absolutely, you. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you? Do you follow any kind of fat diets, keto, intermittent, or anything of that sort? So not a big fan of any of these diets, to be okay. honest. And I you know, I think what Ashish really hit the nail on the head. Yeah. But just a little bit of a different twist from my own personal perspective. Sure. For instance, uh, you know, there are people who are intolerant to certain kinds of so for sure. instance, I'm lactose intolerant. Okay. So I have to tweak my diet. So while I still follow the same basic rules, okay. but for instance, when I need to consume protein, I have to be very careful about no plant-based proteins or okay. animal protein as you know, whatever may, the case may be. That's a little bit of tweaks that I would make to my nutritional portfolio, so right. to speak. Uh, right. But otherwise, the basic tenets obviously want a good balanced meal. Uh, and you know, uh, don't overdo anything. I think that's that's really the the key thing that's to keep in mind. That's the key thing. But then, see, we're talking about the markets. We're talking about your financial portfolio, which obviously is aligned as per your financial goals. No doubt about that. It's going to be very case specific and a very customized thing to make your own financial portfolio. But just a general view from both of uh, you. Actually, I want this. Looking at the current market situation, what is that one dose of nutrition that should be there in your portfolio? You know, when I'm talking about nutrition for your portfolio in terms of uh, 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 financial terms, it, it could mean what kind of asset class or your exposure in that particular asset class should be going up or maybe reducing considering the current market condition. Yeah, so uh, Kavita, whilst we are all bullish on the long term prospects sure. of our economy, stock market, etc. But often what happens in a bull market is risk tends to get ignored. Right. Okay. Uh, so from that point of view, I think it's very important to have some gold in the portfolio. Right? Okay. Uh, we always recommend about 10-15% allocation to gold. Uh, by the way, gold, uh, uh, you know, in spite of it being a conservative asset class, has done quite well in the last five Definitely. years. Definitely. And someone was just telling me that, you know, our moms or, you know, women in India have probably done as well or better than equity investors in the last five years because gold has given very good returns. So my advice would be don't forget risk okay. and a good way to mitigate risk from equity markets is to have some gold in the portfolio. Okay. This is not a time, you know, if things are going so well, yeah. you sell gold, you sell debt yeah. and, you know, sure. there is that instinct to, yeah. you know, sell everything and pile on to markets yeah. because it's doing very well. So I think that is something you have to be wary about. So I would say if there is one thing you need to have in your portfolio today is gold. It completes the thali. Okay, of the, portfolio. the of the portfolio. What about you? Yeah, I think, I mean, I would agree with Ashish uh, in that sense. The other take that I, you know, probably want to add is, 
and you know what Ashish alluded to was that there's a lot of exuberance in these bull markets, right? right? So investors gravitate towards a particular asset class. So what tends to happen is that everyone's super loaded up on say equities, and you forget your bread and butter fixed income. I think that's another one that's been ignored for the last few years, just because of the superlative performance of the equity markets. Now's a good time to just step back and think that is my portfolio over allocated? Maybe I should get you know, book some of those profits and get into a more sort of steadier, safer asset class like fixed income to a certain part of my portfolio, you know, if, depending on what my asset allocation needs to mark. Uh, I think that's a good thing for every investor to think about doing right now. But even within equity, you might want to rebalance? So, uh, you know, I normally recommend a one-year frequency for rebalancing. That just works very well. We've done a lot of back tests on asset allocated portfolios. One-year rebalance works extremely well. Uh, what I would do within equities is if any pocket of the equity portfolio has done extremely well. Okay. Right? This is very contrary to uh, you know human nature. Yeah. Okay. Let's say a particular fund, uh, to give you an example, a micro or a small cap fund, has done phenomenally well okay. over the last five years. Yeah, yeah, great. It may be a good idea to rebalance it back into a flexi cap or a large sure. cap fund. Right, uh, but it's very contrary to human uh, emotion to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or nature yeah, because you know yeah. you want to put more money in something that is exactly, done well. Exactly. But this is this is one thing I would recommend to relook at the equity portfolio, relook at allocations, like he said. If let's say you are a, you know your strategic allocation is 50, it's gone to 60 because the last three years have been great. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. want to bring it back to 50. Now within that as well, if small and mid cap portfolios have done phenomenally well and the risk has gone up beyond what you would like it to be in your portfolio, then it's a good time to sure, do that. Sure, sure. Yeah. Same thing for you? Yeah, I think, you know, the Ashish touched upon the market cap. The other thing is also style, right? Mm -hmm. With something which yeah, people true. tend to not always focus on. We always look at the end result of the returns of a portfolio. And, you know, if I just take you back in time in 2020, everything was growth. Everything was working in favor of growth. All the money was piling into growth. Right. Anyone who was sitting in growth was ignoring value then. Right. Values made some very good returns in the past few years. If you've you know, made good money in value, maybe some, some money should be taken off the cable, table, reallocated to growth. As, you know, so I think that's another perspective to think about from an investor's portfolio. Okay. I think a lot of other aspects now, I can just go on with the discussion, but then we have to start with our viewer queries. And uh, the way we've decided our viewer queries today is we are taking age group. Uh, say 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 and so on. And uh, we are going to help them design their portfolio based on their time horizon, their risk appetite and financial goals. So Kostu, I'm going to start with you. I think the question uh, for you that I have is, I'm just going to read it out. Okay, so, um, okay, so his name is Tamil and uh, he's 38 years old and he says that he needs to create uh, wealth of almost 3 to 4 crores in 12 years. And... Uh, he says that he is ready to invest almost 50,000 per month and will increase the investment by 10%, so stepping up his investment. And uh, uh, he's also aware that the market is at all-time high. So what kind of mutual funds would you want to recommend? Sure. So I'm, I'm glad that he's asking this question <laughs> and he's got, a, I mean, he's got a reasonable sense of what he's looking right. for. A couple of things when I do the math behind you know, what his requirements are and uh, you know, what he's looking to invest. The first thing he will have to do is, you know, he'll have to substantially increase his SIP amount. He's starting at about 50,000 today. Right. And, you know, if, you know, we have to put everything into perspective in terms of conservative return estimates. Also thinking about the fact that when he comes closer to his goal, he can't be allocated all to a volatile asset class like equity. He will have to gradually reduce equity exposure and move into fixed income so that he Coming protects closer us. closer to the goal. To the goal, yeah. right? So all of that put into place, you know, you have to think about conservative return estimates and not what the markets have done in the last, sure. you know, three years, right? Uh, so the one thing he'll have to do is aggressively step up his SIP like almost 20% every year. Okay. That's the bare minimum the that yeah. he will need to do. Uh, the other thing would be that, you know, we'll want to keep some sort of liquid cash available uh, to him for his you know, emergency needs. But the remaining portion, and, you know, that could be 5-10% depending on what his allocation looks like. But the remaining can actually go into a, just a good mix of equity funds, right? Uh, and it could be across large, mid and small. And, okay. you know, I would think where we're sitting at with the 12-year horizon, we can probably do like a 50% large cap and about, you know, 30 between mid and small, more to mid, and maybe another or 10 odd percent to international equities. I think that's one thing that we tend to ignore. Okay. Uh, you know, that would build a good 
balanced portfolio to start with. Mm. But as we approach, like I said, you know, when we get into year five and year six, you know, he's five, six years away from his goal, he'll have to start stepping down his equity exposure. Okay. Uh, because you want to avoid the event risk mm. of, you know, sure. if he needs yeah. three or four crores at the end of his time period, uh, he'll need to make sure that uh, he stepped up his SIPs and also start reducing his equity exposure as he enters year six and uh, onwards uh, for his portfolio. Okay. okay. So, so we surely don't know whether it's a market high or market is going to go down. We, we can't predict all of that. But then one question that he might have in his mind is, is this the right time to start investing? Right. So I, I, you know, I, I don't think he's from Bombay, but I'm sure yeah. I can relate. And I use this example to make okay. it very relatable that if I'm standing at a local train station, let's say the other station, right? Okay. And I'm waiting to catch a train and it's so crowded. I say, okay, let me wait. I'll Peak come to hours. the next one. Sure. I'll keep waiting, I'll keep waiting, and I'll always miss the train, <laughs> yeah. right? So the whole point about SIP investing, it, it avoids that timing risk. Okay. Because no one can predict in the short term, you know, is the market going to go down, is it going to go up? Mm. I mean, you know, when the COVID crash happened, everyone was thinking that, okay, mm. you know, maybe it's going to stay depressed for a while, but yeah. we saw the sharp rebound yeah. that happened. We've seen instances like this many, many times in the past, and it'll happen again. So the best way to play it is an SIP, right? I mean, if you, if you'll, you get a monthly paycheck, that also instills that financial discipline that I'm going to park an X percentage of my paycheck into SIPs. Okay. You know, automatically you know that you're saving that money every month from yeah. your paycheck, and it avoids the timing risk of market. That's the best way of doing it, not worrying about, you know, is it too high, is it too low, but obviously you need to figure out your allocation depending on you know what your time horizon is sure. and, and things of like that yeah. yeah and keep reviewing your portfolio every Absolutely. six months yeah yeah next question is for you ashish and it's from jagdish and he's 26 years old okay and he's currently investing in three funds he's got gm flexi cap mutla Loswa large and mid cap and uh, kotak nifty next 50. uh 4000 4, each in the first two funds and then 2000 in the uh, last fund and uh, so small and mid cap valuations are very high and uh, he also says that uh, i want to add one fund maybe a, a factor fund and uh, will that be a right fit for his portfolio now right so uh, again you know i'm just taking cue from what Kostov said, sure. he's an SIP investor. Yeah. So uh, for him, and he's got a long runway, yeah. right? He's 26, 26. And first of all, I commend him for thinking, uh, you know, so strategically. Uh, so he's got a long runway mm. ahead of him. Mm. So my view is that he shouldn't be worrying about valuations because, okay. uh, in fact, contrary to uh, what he thinks, mm. and again, you know, even I'm answering Kostov's query. Uh, he should actually pray that the markets crash and remain low yeah. because he'll accumulate more units in the initial sure. phase of his uh, initial saving phase, right? Yeah. And that will give him more units and create more wealth for him. So actually, he shouldn't be worried about valuations, to be very honest. He's got a long, long, long runway. Right. Uh, in terms of adding another fund, I mean, given what he already has, see, I'm a big fan of flexi-cap funds. Okay, because why so? Uh, reason being the fund manager has the flexibility to decide whether sure. he wants to do large cap, mid cap or small cap and uh, you know he can decide bottoms up which companies he is uh, positive on, he or she is positive on and uh, if you take a longer runway, let's say he's 26 and assuming he wants to retire by 50, 55 or 60, you've got 25 odd years ahead of you, I think the returns even out from small, mid and large, the returns even out okay. over a longer period okay. so flexi cap is a far better fund okay. to add okay. because these factor funds have their phases you know totally. uh, they are basically trend uh, following yeah. uh, so today a value factor may be doing well tomorrow momentum may do well um, you know then you may have a low wall doing well but it keeps changing, it keeps changing. but a flexi cap active manager will have the flexibility to maneuver the portfolio depending on the market uh, sure. situation okay yeah. all right so you would recommend him to not to have a factor fund yeah i would say ha add a flexi cap fund flexi cap yes okay so uh, the one that I, that is there is what large cap oriented flexi cap no a flexi cap can go anywhere yeah. but typically these funds have about 50 to 70 percent in large cap exactly, and yeah. 30 to 15 mid and small mm -hmm. yeah
let's move on quickly and uh, Ashish for you I have uh, Mr. George Squarey from Kochi very interesting one he says that he's a 70 year old government pensioner who wants to invest uh, 50 lakhs uh, which he's obtained from salary of a, from sale of a property for the higher education of uh, his grandson uh, which starts after six years and may extend the next 10 years uh, annual amount needed may be 10 lakhs per year uh, he has selected few mutual funds for lump sum investment he's got uh, he selected ICICI multi-asset 10 lakhs over there, uh, HDFC BAF 10 lakhs, uh, Mahindra Manu Life Multicap 10 lakhs, JM Value Fund 10 lakhs, DSP Nifty 50 Equal Weight Index 10 lakhs. The selection, uh, your uh, take on that and also the entire strategy that is. Yeah, so uh, look, uh, I think uh, barring the multi-asset fund, the all the other funds are equity based, right? So uh, if I look at uh, you know, the next six years, right? He says he's got six years yeah. to plan for the education. Yeah. Even if you take a 10 to 12 percent return on the portfolio, the portfolio should double. Okay. Okay. So 50 lakhs should become anywhere between 80 lakhs to a crore. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, he's talking about 10 lakhs every year, right? Mm -hmm. So even if he does an SWP, SWP is basically a systematic withdrawal plan or a redemption. He can redeem, you know, proportionately from each of these funds mm -hmm. uh, every year he will still last it out because okay. let's say that crore again grows at 10 or 12 percent right so which means on that crore you're anyway generating 10 lakhs every year yeah. so even after withdrawing 10 lakhs every year you'll still be left with a fair bit of corpus after funding the education okay. so okay. he's he's fine he's if you ask me yeah. he's, he's he's good to go okay. i mean i would probably tweak some funds here and there but okay. i think so uh, allocation is allocation? most important yeah so where, so where allocation he's an equity and one multi asset fund yeah i think maybe closer to the goal mm -hmm. if he's if he's very close to the goal let's let's assume that he's very let's let's take 1 crore as a target for okay. this portfolio in okay. 6 years okay. right whether the 1 crore happens in 4 years 3 years or 5 years or 6 years it doesn't concern us so the moment he hits that one crore number or a 90 lakh number, he should move more money to multi-asset. Okay. Right. Okay. So he protects the goal. Goal. Okay. Uh, my name is Gaurangi and I want to invest in crypto. Should I do that? If yes, how? And if not, why? If not crypto, then should I invest in the share market? I'm 30 years old and my salary is 65,000 per month and I can save around 25,000 per month. I'll give a disclaimer. I I am no expert on crypto, I do not understand it at all and you know the biggest challenge for a lot of us is that if you don't understand it, you can't value it, you don't know what's going to move the needle on that, right? So uh, I think to a second part of the question, so the crypto bit I would say don't do it, yeah. uh, you know, if you don't understand it, don't do it, I mean you know, even if it's a fad or it's done exceedingly well in the recent past, best to perhaps stay away or maybe just you know if you really want to dabble just a very small proportion uh, you know, of, of, of sort of your side portfolio. But I think to the key part of the question in terms of how do I invest that 25k, do I buy, you know, direct stocks or funds, right? I, I mean, my clear answer is buying funds because a lot of DIY investors, you know, came in during the COVID time, uh, obviously got excited. I mean, in a bull run, everyone is super excited about the yeah. returns the portfolios made. Yeah. But the biggest challenge is that, you know, when you look at the polarization of returns that can happen even in the index stocks, you know, uh, and you know that is the challenge if you don't identify those top you know 10 percent of the stocks that have moved the needle uh you're gonna actually end up underperforming probably underperforming cash also so the best is to i mean you have you know great active managers in sure. the country if you can't pick an active fund then just buy an index that's also all right you're participating in the market but doing that in a systematic you know yeah. uh, scientific way uh, so i think build a portfolio of equity funds and majority would go into large flexi with maybe about 40 odd percent into mid and small. All right, uh, last question and this is uh, from Mr. Subramanian Pichai uh, Ashish and he says that he's 60 years old, retired with a pension of uh, 20,000 per month and no other income source, uh, has a health cover of 20 lakhs and uh, mutual fund corpus so far is 1.2 CR in four flexi cap funds. Monthly expenses are around 50,000 per month. Uh, how can he uh, redeploy this 1.2 CR and get regular income of 50,000 for next 25 years? So, uh, look, the traditional answer mm -hmm. will be to move mo more money to debt. Right. Right. Totally. As you retire. Yeah. Yeah. Right. People advocate anywhere between a large chunk of the 50 to 60 percent in debt. But I'm not going to give you a traditional answer. Okay. Interesting. Okay. See, he's, his corpus, equity corpus is 1.2 crores. Right. 
right? He's going to get twenty thousand in pension. Right. So his gap is only thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Now, even if he sets up a systematic withdrawal plan mm -hmm. from his four funds, let's say thirty thousand, so you set up seven and a half thousand uh, per per fund. Okay. Right. Sure. The total corpus that you need to withdraw every year is three lakh sixty thousand. Okay. Right, which is three percent of his total capital. Right. And even if you conservatively take uh, equity compounding at 10 to 12 percent, I'm not even talking about 15, 16 percent that it's compounded sure. in the past. Sure. He'll have a fair bit of corpus to leave for his next generation. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So if you ask me honestly, so he's... Uh, but of course, he has to brace himself for more volatility. Okay. So that 10 to 12 percent return is not going to come in a straight line. Right. You will have two, three years of great returns. Um, and maybe two years of not so good returns okay. and maybe one year where the portfolio will go down 20-30%. Right. Right. He has to be mentally attuned to that, which I think he would be because he, this corpus that he has built in equity funds would have been done over a period of time or sure. through SIP sure. investing. Yeah. right? So he would have experienced equity markets, I'm okay. assuming. Right. So if he's okay with that, hmm. I would he say he's done brilliantly. Okay. He just needs to fill the gap of 30,000. Uh, which is like 3.6% yield on the entire portfolio, 3% yield on the entire portfolio. Even after withdrawing that, he'll have a fair bit of uh, money left in the portfolio, right? Uh, okay, let me go one step further, so it'll make it very clear for him. Let's say you withdraw 3% per annum, okay. right? And the portfolio compounds at 12% per annum. Hmm. So which means the portfolio net is actually compounding at 9% per annum. So his portfolio is still double in uh, 8 years. Eight years. So after 8 years, his portfolio will become 2.4 crores. Right. This is important. Reason being that what he is assuming as a monthly expense today will keep going up also over a period exactly, of time. Totally, yeah. Right. So if if you are assuming that your uh, expenses are com compounding at six percent per annum, hmm. which means your expenses are going to double after twelve years. So after twelve years, he is not going to need fifty thousand. He is going to need one lakh a month. Hmm. Right. And if this equity portfolio does what we just spoke about, then actually he can. You know, spend more lavishly and have a much better lifestyle sure. during but his what retirement. What about diversifying? Because he's yeah. got four flexi cap funds. I think it's well diversified. Well diversified. Four flexi cap funds. On an average, each of them will have 70, 80 stocks. So, should he be checking the portfolio of the funds? There should be no reputation in terms of exposure in companies and sectors. Not really. I mean, as really? long as he's comfortable with the four managers, sure. and I'm assuming, like Kausto mentioned, he's done the style uh, diversification. I mean, every fund manager has his or her own approach. Right. So, if he's working with a wealth manager, he'll be, you know, advised appropriately as to whether these are the four funds he should hold sure. on. But look, he's done well. Okay. You know, it's flexi cap funds, and allocation matters 95%, mm. right? 5% everything else. So, so I think he shouldn't bother much. All right. So I do have a lot of other questions, but then it's time up on the show. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks. But then uh, before I wind up, one last question, because you're talking about nutrition yes. and you're talking about financial portfolio, nutrition for your financial portfolio. Uh, uh, what is that one aspect of your uh, food nutrition and your financial portfolio nutrition that you would just completely be stay out of, like a strict no, no matter what? For me, I mean, I think sweets or something sweets? Like that. Really? as much as possible yeah, I, I mean I, I do I do I, I love sweets okay so let me but then I tend to gravitate to the other extreme so okay. as much as possible stay away okay I think from a financial maybe just the esoteric sort of asset classes like you know crypto and all crypto. which I, I yeah. completely stay away from Ashish what about you so let me extend this analogy between food and investing okay. right so first thing I would stay away from is binging Right? Binging on anything. I mean, yeah. you can have everything in a balanced manner and s stay away from snacking. I stay away from snacking. Okay. And this is akin to, you know, when you're investing, like the guy asked, should I invest in crypto? Yeah. Should I put money in a power stock? Yeah. Should I put money in a thematic? That, that is akin to snacking. Okay. Right. And snacking is not good for health. You have your balanced meal on time regularly and you have a cheat meal. It's okay. I mean, you know, 10% of your portfolio, you want to follow a trend or yeah. some passion that you've got, do yeah. it on the side, on the side right? Yeah. But A, avoid binging mm. and uh, B, stop snacking. Interesting. I think that will serve you well in the that's, long run. That's great that's advice. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So on that note, thank you so much once again for being on the show and helping our viewers with everything related to uh, uh, wealth, nutrition, as well as uh, your health nutrition. Thank you so much. Thanks and uh, it's a wrap on Pleasure. the show. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.
If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.